today is number 501, Come Follow Me, number 501, please rise. In the name of the Father, and of the Son, and of the Holy Spirit, grace to you and peace from God our Father and the Lord Jesus Christ. Uh, I am Father Dennis Bergsbacken, one of the senior priests of the Diocese of Green Bay. Uh, I have not celebrated a regular Mass here at uh, Assumption of the Blessed Virgin Mary uh, before. I have been here for some funerals over the course of time. Um, I grew up a mile west of Rose Lawn, which for those of you from the area would know about where that is. Uh, I do get to play about once or twice a year, and that's because I have to come to Super Ron's to get Polish sausage. Uh, I know some people tell me that Maplewood has the best police, but I think it is um, Super Ron's. And that stuff you buy in most of the stores in Green Bay and Appleton in those plastic wraps, it's not Polish sausage. I don't know what it is, but it's definitely not Polish sausage. Uh, is this microphone cutting on and off? Yes, it is. Um, that probably means there's a battery going dead or something like that. I'll try to be loud. Uh, I do not care who stole the kishka. Uh, now, those of you who are my age and older might understand that song, but uh, kishka is not one of my things. Uh, but I do like charnina, if anyone knows how to make that. Anyway, um, as we gather today, we do so in prayer. We gather and we also do a live stream here. Uh, so for those of you who join us through the electronic means, um, we certainly ask that you, enjoy, you come to pray with us and recognize God's presence. And so we prepare to celebrate these sacred mysteries, looking at the ways in which we are called to serve the Lord and one another.
Lord Jesus, you are the everlasting word of truth. Lord, have mercy. Lord Jesus, you forgive our transgressions. Christ, have mercy. Lord Jesus, you bring healing and comfort to our weary world. Lord, have mercy. May Almighty God have mercy on us, forgive us our sins, and bring us to everlasting life. Let us join together in singing the Gloria, number 876. Let us pray. O oh God, who show the light of your truth to those who go astray so that they may return to the right path. Give all, who for the faith they profess are accounted Christians, the grace to reject whatever is contrary to the name of Christ, and to strive after all that does it honor. Through our Lord Jesus Christ, your Son, who lives and reigns with you in the unity of the Holy Spirit, God forever and ever. A reading from the book of the prophet Amos. Amaziah, priest of Bethel, said to Amos, Off with you, visionary. Flee to the land of Judah. There earn your bread by prophesying, but never again prophesy in Bethel, for it is the king's sanctuary and a royal temple. Amos answered Amaziah, I was no prophet, nor have I belonged to a company of prophets. I was a shepherd and a dresser of sycamores. The Lord took me from following the flock and said to me, Go prophesy to my people, Israel. The word of the Lord.
The responsorial psalm can be found on page 185. A reading from the letter of St. Paul to the Ephesians. Blessed be the God and Father of our Lord Jesus Christ, who has blessed us in Christ with every spiritual blessing in the heavens, as he chose us in him before the foundation of the world to be holy and without blemish before him. In love, he destined us for adoption to himself through Jesus Christ in accord with the favor of his will for the praise of the glory of God's grace that he granted us in the Beloved. In him we have redemption by his blood, the forgiveness of transgressions, in accord with the riches of his grace that he lavished upon us. In all wisdom and insight, he has made known to us the mystery of his will in accord with his favor that he set forth in him as a plan for the fullness of times, to sum up all things in Christ, in heaven and on earth. The word of the Lord.
The Lord be with you. A reading from the Holy Gospel according to Mark. Jesus summoned the twelve and began to send them out two by two and gave them authority over unclean spirits. He instructed them to take nothing for the journey but a walking stick. No food, no sack, no money in their belts. They were, however, to wear sandals, but not a second tunic. He said to them, wherever you enter a house, stay there until you leave. Whatever place does not welcome you or listen to you, leave there and shake the dust off your feet in testimony against them. So they went off and preached repentance. The twelve drove off, drove out many demons, and they anointed them with oil, with oil, many who were sick and cured them. The Gospel of the Lord. The dialogue that we hear in our first reading from the book of the prophet Amos is a conversation between Amos, a prophet, and Amaziah, the priest at the shrine of, at Bethel. They have very different perspectives. And those perspectives come from the charges they were given and what happens when those two things come in conflict? Amos was called to God, by God to prophesy, to speak the truth. Amaziah, as a priest of the temple or shrine in Bethel, was an employee of the king. And he was supposed to carry out the activities, the ritual activities, of the king's shrine. Now, there were often prophet, guild prophets that were called, were attached to a particular court or shrine, and their responsibility was to prophesy prosperity for the king and disaster for the enemies of the king. Amaziah was not a guild prophet. He was a prophet chosen by God with special gifts. And most likely, Amaziah, the priest of the temple, of that particular temple or shrine, would have probably recognized that Amos had these special gifts. He just did not want the prophet to use them in that place. Because the shrine was recognized as um, the sanctuary and a ro royal temple of the king. Amaziah, Amaziah probably recognized that Amos was speaking the truth. But he didn't want the truth spoken there. The passage doesn't tell us what Amos was saying um, that um, was not wanted. But it does tell us that this was the sanctuary of the king. And that implies that all prophecies had to abide what the king wanted to hear and what the king wanted the people to hear. Amos couldn't be relied upon to conform to the king's wishes. He was not a good press secretary for the king's palace. He might say the wrong thing. He might actually tell the truth 
and that could set him up for um, real problems. Perhaps, now we don't know for sure, but that may be why Amaziah tells him to flee. Flee. Leave quickly, lest harm come to you. In these sort of situations, I wonder, I wonder what was going on in the conscience of Amaziah, the priest of the shrine. Did he recognize that Amos was telling the truth and that he was squelching it? Now, in fairness, he was an employee of the king. So as for the ethical principle of agency, he would have been an agent of the king who employed him. Where was his conscience in this? Being an agent of the king? rather than a protector of the truth. In some ways, he was stuck. Was he trying to protect Amos from the king's wrath, even if knowing that he was denying God's truth? And I wonder, do we ever find ourselves in some of those situations where we avoid what we know to be true to protect certain aspects of our life? Was Amaziah sacrificing truth for his job or maybe for his own life? I don't know. But we know there would have been, at least I think there would have been, an internal struggle of what to do when seeing the truth but not wanting to be disloyal to his employer. Now the gospel is somewhat different in that we hear that the, um, this is the first missionary uh, ventures for the Twelve. Jesus prepares them for possible rejection and failure. They were to combine their words of preaching and their deeds, to preach repentance and to drive out evil and cure illness. Jesus began to send them out an interesting phrase that we never hear Jesus stop sending out apostles. We never hear that Jesus is done sending out disciples. But for Mark, he mentions Jesus began to send them out. And he sends out us as well. God chooses ordinary people. He confers on them extraordinary responsibility. Amos was a shepherd, a dresser of sycamores. Most of the apostles were fishermen, some tax collectors. Paul was a tent maker. Christians today have varying responsibilities. Some farm, some mechanics, teachers, engineers, housekeepers and nurses, clerks and attorneys, all people following ordinary professions needed in our world today. But in doing them, called to do them in remarkable ways, touch minds and hearts and souls and heal them. Ordinary people, that's who we are, told to instruct and comfort people and help out, help drive out the demons that destroy people's lives. To participate in ordinary ways in the extraordinary establishment of the reign of God. Amos, Paul, the fishermen and tax collectors that we heard about, none of them particularly distinctive according to the standards of the world of their day. They were not celebrities. They were like us. Yet, one of them called for the re-evaluation of the social structure of his people. Another helped an entire nation come to grips with the exile. The rest set out to convert the entire world. Ordinary people 
who were truly extraordinary. And now, we are the ones called and being sent out. Chosen with our own vulnerabilities and brokenness. And that can be awe-inspiring. Like those of the scriptures, we can bring God's saving grace to our world today. We can bring extraordinary grace in our ordinary lives when done with the grace of God. We never see Jesus being done sending out disciples. So my guess is at the end of Mass when we are told to go out and proclaim the good news, we are the ones being sent out today. I believe in one God, the Father Almighty, maker of heaven and earth, of all things visible and invisible. I believe in one Lord Jesus Christ, the only begotten Son of God, born of the Father before all ages, God from God, light from light, true God from true God, begotten, not made, consubstantial with the Father. Through him all things were made. For us and for our salvation, he came down from heaven, and by the Holy Spirit was incarnate of the Virgin Mary and became man. For our sake he was crucified under Pontius Pilate. He suffered death and was buried, and rose again on the third day in accordance with the scriptures. He ascended into heaven and is seated at the right hand of the Father, he will come again in glory to judge the living and the dead, and his kingdom will have no end. I believe in the Holy Spirit, the Lord, the giver of life, who proceeds from the Father and the Son, who with the Father and the Son is adored and glorified, who has spoken through the prophets. I believe in one holy Catholic and apostolic church. I confess one baptism for the forgiveness of sins, and I look forward to the resurrection of the dead and the life of the world to come. Amen. We are called, we are blessed in Christ, and we call upon God as we make known these um, prayers. For the church, that we may follow in the disciples' footsteps as we make our journeys in the world, seeking repentance, offering forgiveness, combating evil, and healing sickness and strife. Let us pray to the Lord. Lord, hear our word prayer. That we may work tirelessly to usher in a world where kindness and truth shall meet and justice and peace shall kiss. Let us pray to the Lord. Lord, hear our word prayer. For the safety and success of missionaries, who bring the good news in word and in deed to people throughout the world. Let us pray to the Lord. Lord, hear our prayer. For victims of physical, emotional, or sexual abuse, that they may know safety and security once again and receive the healing they need. Let us pray to the Lord. Lord, hear our prayer. That through the celebration of the Eucharistic revival this week, we may all grow in the love of Christ, present in the Eucharist, renewed in spirit as we carry the presence of Christ wherever we go. Let us pray to the Lord. Lord, hear our prayer. For married people everywhere, that they will live in love and faithfulness, for better, for worse, in joy or in sorrow, all the days of their lives, 
especially Jada Helms and Fletcher Van Zeeland, who were united in marriage this weekend. Let us pray to the Lord. Lord, hear our prayer. That the faithful departed may join Christ in the final glory of his kingdom, especially Michael Walgurski. Let us pray to the Lord. Lord, thank you. Our experience has taught us that you always give us what we truly need, and for that we are grateful. We make our prayers through Christ our Lord. The Song of Preparation is number 387, The Summons, number 387. Brothers and sisters, that my sacrifice and yours may be acceptable to God the Almighty Father. Amen. 
O Lord, look upon the offerings of your church as she makes her prayer to you and grant that when consumed by those who believe, they may bring ever greater holiness through Christ our Lord. The Lord be with you. Lift up your hearts. Let us give thanks to the Lord our God. It is truly right and just, our duty and our salvation, always and everywhere to give you thanks, Father of mercies and faithful God. For you have given us Jesus Christ, your Son, as our Lord and Redeemer. He always showed compassion for children and for the poor, for the sick and for sinners, and he became a neighbor to the oppressed and the afflicted. By word and deed, he announced to the world that you are our Father, and that you care for all your sons and daughters. And so with all the angels and saints, we exalt and bless your name and sing the hymn of your glory as without end we acclaim. You are indeed holy and to be glorified, O God, who love the human race and who always walk with us on the journey of life. Blessed indeed is your Son, present in our midst when we are gathered by his love and when, as once for the disciples, so now for us, he opens the scriptures and breaks the bread. Therefore, Father most merciful, we ask that you send forth your Holy Spirit to sanctify these gifts of bread and wine, that they may become for us the body and blood of our Lord Jesus Christ. On the day before he was to suffer, on the night of the Last Supper, he took bread and said the blessing, broke the bread, and gave it to his disciples, saying, Take this all of you, and eat of it, for this is my body, which will be given up for you. In a similar way, when supper was ended, he took the chalice, gave you thanks, and gave the chalice to his disciples, saying, Take this, all of you, and drink from it. For this is the chalice of my blood, the blood of the new and eternal covenant, which will be poured out for you and for many for the forgiveness of sins. Do this in memory of me. The mystery of faith. When we eat this bread and drink this cup, we proclaim your death, O Lord, until you come again. Therefore, Holy Father, as we celebrate the memorial of Christ, your Son, our Savior, whom you led through his passion and death on the cross to the glory of the resurrection, and whom you have seated at your right hand, we proclaim the work of your love until he comes in glory. And we offer you the bread of life and the chalice of blessing. 
Look with favor on the oblation of your church in which we show forth the paschal sacrifice of Christ that has been handed on to us. And grant that by the power of the spirit of your love, we may be counted now and until the day of eternity among the members of your Son, in whose body and blood we have communion. Bring your church, O Lord, to perfect faith and charity, together with Francis, our Pope, and David, our Bishop, all the bishops, priests, and deacons, and the entire people you have made for your own. Open our eyes to the needs of our brothers and sisters. Inspire in us words and actions to comfort those who labor and are burdened. Make, the, make us serve them truly after the example of Christ and at his command. And may your church stand as a living witness to truth and freedom, to peace and justice, that all people may be raised up to a new hope. Remember our brothers and sisters who have fallen asleep in the peace of your Christ and all the dead whose faith you alone have known. Admit them to rejoice in the light of your face and in the resurrection give them the fullness of life. Grant also to us when our earthly pilgrimage is done that we may come to an eternal dwelling place and live with you forever, there in communion with the Blessed Virgin Mary, Mother of God, with Blessed Joseph, her spouse, with the apostles and martyrs and all the saints, we shall praise and exalt you through Jesus Christ, your Son. Through him and with him and in him, O God, Almighty Father, in the unity of the Holy Spirit, all glory and honor is yours forever and ever. the Savior's command and formed by divine teaching, we dare to say, Our Father, who art in heaven, hallowed be thy name. Thy kingdom come, thy will be done, on earth as it is in heaven. Give us this day our daily bread, and forgive us our trespasses, as we forgive those who trespass against us. And lead us not into temptation, but deliver us from evil. Deliver us, Lord, we pray, from every evil. Graciously grant peace in our days, that by the help of your mercy, we may be always free from sin and safe from all distress, as we await the blessed hope and the coming of our Savior, Jesus Christ. Lord Jesus Christ, who said to your apostles, Peace I leave you, my peace I give you. Look not on our sins, but on the faith of your church, and graciously grant her peace and unity in accordance with your will, who live and reign forever and ever. The peace of the Lord be with you always. Let us offer to each other a sign of peace. Thank mm -hmm. you. Thank you. 
Behold the Lamb of God. Behold him who takes away the sins of the world. Blessed are those called to the supper of the Lamb. Lord, I am not worthy that you should enter under my roof, but only say the word and my soul shall be healed. Our communion song is number 514, The Dwelling Place, number 514. Thank 
number 362, Spirit and Grace. Let us pray. O Lord, having consumed these gifts, that by your our participation in this mystery, its saving effects upon us may grow through Christ our Lord. There are a couple of announcements. Um, they don't really make sense to me, but I'll read them. Um, script is available at the back of church and every day at the parish today and at the back of and every day at the parish office during regular business hours. Uh, now is the time to get your Baseball Mania tickets. I hope you know what Baseball Mania is. I don't. But the season starts July 22nd, and it's a great fundraiser uh, for the parish. Next weekend is Pulaski Polka Days. I know about them. Uh, next weekend is Pulaski Polka Days, so check the bulletin for complete mass times, times and changes. That probably means there are some changes, or this announcement wouldn't be here. So be sure to read the bulletin uh, about that. And then remember to invite and welcome all visitors to our community, to your parish and community. It's not mine, so I shouldn't say ours. Um, the other thing about that is if you're like every other parish, everyone sits in the same seat every weekend. If there are strangers sitting in your seat, welcome them and don't kick them out. Um, I know churches that do that. Um, I've seen it in churches where I was pastor. So if there's a stranger, welcome them. Anyway, the Lord be with you. May Almighty God bless you, the Father and the Son and the Holy Spirit. Go and announce the gospel of the Lord. Let us go forth singing number 383, Take the Word of God with You, number 8383. 